Let us now look into some more details of the Android 64-bit application support for Delphi that is provided as part of the 10.3.3 release. The goal, of course, is to support the Google Play Store, which has a requirement that you need to provide 64-bit version of your application alongside with the 32-bit version. I'm saying alongside because there are still many devices out there that are not capable of running 64-bit applications. So in most cases, you want to deploy both the 64-bit and the 32-bit version of the same application. This is where one of the features we have just added comes handy. We support building applications that are deployed with the Android App Bundle technology. This is an alternative option to deploying a single APK for either 32 or 64-bit. And an Android App Bundle includes both, the, both versions of the both binaries of your application in a single package that you can upload to the Google Store. Of course, the main feature is the ability to have a new compiler, a new Delphi compiler that targets the Android 64-bit platform. It's also based on the LLVM compiler infrastructure, like the 32-bit counterpart. It's still ARC enabled, so the migration is fairly smooth because there is the same memory model, the same architecture, the same logic, and unless you've used pointers at the low level or manipulated memory directly, most of the applications will just be, a, be easily recompiled to 64-bit Android. Along with the compiler, there is extensive support for the runtime library, including file system access, the parallel library, and most of the other features that you would expect. And of course, support for the FireMonkey user interface library with all of the FireMonkey controls that uh, were previously available on Android 32 bit. They are now all available in the 64 bit platform. For database access, we have the full database runtime library. We have Fardac client to access local databases on the device. And we also provide Interbase 2020 with uh, Android 64 bit support for both IB Lite, which is included for everyone, and IB2Go, which supports encryption and is available for enterprise and architect customers to distribute with their applications. Of course, we also focus on quality improvements specifically to the Android platform, and these quality improvements uh, account for both 32-bit and 64-bit applications. As a first simple example, I've created a trivial application that is available both for Android 32-bit and Android 64-bit, and the application has a button reporting the size of two data types, integer and pointer. The notable difference here is that integers remain the same size across 32-bit and 64-bit, while pointers get bigger, become 64-bit memory references compared to 32-bit memory references. So what we can now do with this application, I can target my phone and run this application directly on my phone. This is the application in execution on my device. And if I click the button, you can see that both sizes are four bytes because I've compiled it as a 32-bit application. Now, all I have to do is pick the 64-bit target platform, which is already added because it's a new project, otherwise you can add it, and then do the same thing, compile and run the application again. Now this is the new application in execution. If I run it, you can see that the integer size remains the same while the pointer size grows to eight bytes. So this is kind of a very simple proof. This is actually a 64-bit application running on my device. If I wanted to create an app bundle, 
all I have to do is go into the project options, go in the Delphi compiler, compiling page, scroll down and pick the option to generate an Android app bundle with the two binaries. Of course, I'd probably do it after switching to release configuration rather than debug configuration, but that's, that's fine. I also need to pick the application store target. And at this point, if I hit run, the system is going to create the app bundle, deploy to a file and offer an, a dialogue with the folder the file is available. And then you can take that file and upload it to the Google Play Store. And this is the result with the information and where the file is available. Now you, here you can see an actual app bundle uploaded to the Google Play Store. And notice that if you get into more details and you explore the actual app bundle, the system is going to tell you which files are going to be downloaded depending on the bitness, 32-bit uh, or 64-bit devices and the screen density. So rather than having the same download for each user, users receives different download in terms of binaries and in terms of images that are bundled with the, with the download. So the download is always a partial download compared to what you have been uploading.